Okay, let's now look at the forced and the general response for the RL circuit. And so here I've got a circuit where once again I'm using the unit step function. I've got I0 at U of minus T, so this will be on for T less than zero. I've got IF times U of T, this will be off for T greater than, pardon me, this will be on for T greater than zero, excuse me. So these two sources will alternate, and once again we're going to do this, a very similar type of analysis we did for the RC circuit. So for T less than zero, what we'll find is, is that IL of T will be equal to I zero. So for T less than zero, this source will be off, that will be on, and this assumes steady state. And then for T greater than zero, after the switching event, what we'll get is this current will be on, this current goes off, and therefore IF will be equal to IL plus VL over R. So in this case, if for T greater than zero, once this goes off by KCL, this current going in is equal to that current plus that current. And I write my KCL equation, and I can write this now as I over L plus L over R DIL DT. So IF is equal to this. Now I can go through, solve this first order differential equation. The form of the solution will be the same form as for the RC equation. So we can solve to get the following. That IL of T is equal to IF times 1 minus E to the minus R over L times T plus I0 times E to the minus R over L times T. And so once again, I have a general solution for the current through the inductor. The initial condition persists across the switching event, so that I know, that's how I know that I0 is valid. And we note, if I0 is equal to zero, in other words, if we have a zero initial condition, then IL of T would just be equal to IF times one minus E to the minus R over L times T. And we would just have the step or forced response. So same kind of behavior we saw before, but if we have a non-zero initial condition, then we have the general response. So again, these equations are duals of the equations we saw before for the RC circuit. So I can just basically go ahead, and that's why I skipped all the intermediate steps, because they're identical to what you saw for the RC circuit in terms of the forms of the solutions. Okay. If I were going to sketch this, what we're going to find is that, once again, this is a combination of the forced response and the natural response. So once again, the general response is the superposition of the forced response and the natural response. And therefore, we see the same kind of behavior we had before, where we start off at some zero initial condition and converge to a final response. We add that to a situation where we start off with an initial condition, and we go to a zero final response. So our force plus our natural response, if combined together, gives us this type of behavior, where we start off at some initial condition and converge to the final condition, IF.
So once again, the natural response, pardon me, the general response is simply the superposition of the forced plus the natural response. And once again, all of this happens in 5 tau. Once again, we note that as we converge to our final response, once again, we enter steady state again. So we're going to find our general response by finding the initial condition, pardon me, the initial condition, assuming steady state. Our final condition, which we will reach steady state as T goes to infinity, and then finding the value of R across the inductor. Okay? So let's now look at some examples the next time and we'll go through and show how we can apply the general response to find both the current through the inductor and then any other voltage or current in the circuit.